Welcome back to As a Matter of Law. I'm back here again with my co-host, Robert Commentor, and also our next guest, Gary White. Welcome, Gary. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Gary, it's uh, been a while now. I think you first walked into my office about five years ago uh, talking about your disease, and uh, we filed a lawsuit on your behalf, and I'm glad that uh, you're still with us to talk about this. Well, it's, uh, it's been a long and winding road. Um, five and a half years living with this disease uh, has been uh, a most amazing uh, experience. As you know, I was diagnosed five years ago and uh, saw doctors up and down the East Coast. And uh, really, basically, uh, the disease was quite progressed at that point, And uh, nobody really gave me more than about six months to live. But uh, I had the good fortune to encounter a team of people at Columbia Presbyterian in New York City. Um, where a, a young surgeon of extraordinary skill was willing to undertake uh, some surgery and uh, during that first surgery removed a 14-pound mass from an abdominal cavity and uh, that began the long, uh, strange road of uh, treatment that, uh, that has ensued. How did you know that when you were first discovered with this type of mesothelioma? Well, uh, I'd sort of been complaining for about uh, two years to my general practitioner about some general sort of abdominal discomfort. Uh, and uh, quite honestly, they really didn't know to look for it. It's a very rare, very unusual form of cancer. And uh, I got some misdiagnoses, uh, you know, uh, lactose intolerance, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, what kind of symptoms did you have? Oh, just general level of, you know, sort of discomfort, irregularity, uh, and, uh, you know, just sort of generalized that could, discomfort. That could be the kind of thing that anybody could experience that's, with exactly. stomach aches. So that's you exactly would right. would never be that, that's think exactly. that you have this disease. Absolutely, which is why so many people with this disease are so far progressed by the time they ever are finally diagnosed. Very few people are, are diagnosed with this early stage because it sort of masquerades as any number of other conditions. Now, Gary, your exposure to asbestos was not a typical work site exposure though, was it? It was not. Uh, the type of exposure that, uh, that I had w is what's called casual exposure. That is, I did not work directly with the product. Uh, I worked in the field of developmental disabilities and uh, the early part of my career I worked in a large residential facility. Uh, that facility was constructed in the 40s, 50s, and 60s and had many buildings on the campus. And uh, that environment was actually laden with asbestos uh, uh, little did we know that at the time, but uh, soon after I left, OSHA was called in uh, to investigate the environment. They issued a, an over a thousand page report and uh, based on the uh, outcome of that report, uh, that facility was uh, closed down, abatement was done in some buildings. Uh, but again, I never worked directly with the product. I simply was in the environment where that product was present. Was it difficult for you to figure out that maybe it was working in this building that uh, Absolutely, led to absolutely. But uh, as I think you know now, with mesothelioma, it's a one-to-one -one connection between asbestos exposure and the disease. There is no other known cause. So uh, really, it's a, it's a question of deduction. Uh, when someone shows up with mesothelioma, uh, you go backwards and you look at where exposures may have taken place. This was judged to be the, person, the, the place of primary exposure in my case. Thank you for sharing. Thank oh. you, Gary. It's great seeing you. Thank you for having me.